In our lesson today, we'll be dealing with the real number system. Remember, natural numbers are accounting numbers that start with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Whole numbers, they have an extra number in that group, 0. So we begin at 0 and then continue 1, 2, 3, and 4. And integers. Integers, this set includes all positive numbers negative numbers and zero, but does not include any fractions or decimals. In our lesson for today, we will be adding and subtracting integers. In this lesson, we will look at adding and subtracting integers on a number line as well as a t-chart. Our essential question is, how does a t-chart help when adding and subtracting integers? The expression, being in the black, is commonly heard in the financial world and refers to a company making a profit, while being in the red refers to a company taking a loss. Black means profitable, positive, red means loss, negative. Say you have a gift card. The values are negative red when you spend money and positive black when you add money. You want to give the card to a friend. How much money must you add to make the card worth $50? Explain your reason. By the end of this lesson, we'll be able to answer this type of question. 5 plus 3. We'll begin at 5 and we'll go to our right three places. And we'll end up at 8. Our answer is 8. 6 minus 5. We'll begin at 6 and go to our left five places. And we'll see our answer is 1 negative 3 plus 2. We'll start at negative 3 and go to our right two places and our answer is negative 1. Negative 3 minus 2. We'll begin at negative 3 and go to our left 2 and our answer is negative 5. 9 minus 47. We'll begin at 9 and go to our left. Uh-oh. 47 times now that's a bit much so there must be a better and hopefully easier way of doing these types of problems and there is and that's by using a t-chart when we use a t-chart the first thing we look for are change double negatives to positives when using a t-chart step one change double negatives to positive step two if the two numbers are on the same side of the t-chart then we add, we find the sum. Or if the two numbers are in different sides, we move the smaller number and subtract. We find the difference. So let's take a look at 9 minus 47. 9 is positive, so it goes on the positive side. 47 is negative, so it goes on the negative side. Since they're on different sides, we'll move the smaller number over and subtract. When subtracting, 7 is smaller than 9, so we'll need to borrow 1 from the 4, which is 10. 10 plus 7 is 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. 3 minus 0 is 3. But remember, we're on the negative side. 12 plus 9. 12 is positive as well as 9. Since they're on the same side, all we have to do is add. And since it's underneath the positive side, it will stay positive 21. 12 minus 9. 12 is positive, 9 is negative. Therefore, we'll move the, the smaller number over and subtract. 12 minus 9 is 3. Since it's underneath the positive sign, it will stay positive. Negative 12 minus 9. Since 12 is negative, it will go underneath the negative sign. Since there's a minus sign in front of the 9, it will also go underneath the negative sign. Since they're on the same side, we'll add 12 plus 9 is 21. Since it's underneath the negative side, we know it's a negative 21. Negative 12 plus 9. The 12 is negative, so it will go underneath the negative sign. The 9 is positive, it will go underneath the positive sign. Since they're on different sides, we'll move the smaller number over and subtract. 12 minus 9 is 3, and since we're underneath the negative sign, it will be a negative. Negative 12 minus a negative 9. Now we see that we have double negative, so we have to change the double negatives to positives. So now it's read as negative 12 plus 9. Uh, 12 is negative, it goes underneath the negative sign. 
the 9 is positive, I'll go underneath the positive sign. Since they're on different sides, we'll move the smaller number over and subtract. 12 minus 9 is 3, and it's negative because it's underneath the negative sign. Sometimes we have to add more than two numbers together. One method is to add all our positive numbers together and all our negative numbers together and do one subtraction. So let's take a look at this. We know that 4, 6, 11, and 3 are positive. And 15, 14, and 8 are negative. Let's group all our positive numbers together and group all our negative numbers together. So now we'll add all our positive numbers 4 plus 6 plus 11 plus 3 is 24. And we'll add all the negative numbers together. 15 plus 14 plus 8 is 37. But since those are negatives, we'll put a minus sign in front. So now we can use our T chart. The 24 is positive, we'll go underneath the positive side. The 37 is negative, it'll go underneath the negative side. Since they're on different sides, we'll move the smaller number over and subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Since it's underneath the negative side, we know our answer for 24 minus 37 is negative 13. Let's group our positive numbers and our negative numbers. 7 plus 18 plus 14 minus 3 plus 12 plus 9 plus 4. 7 plus 18 plus 14 is 39. 3 plus 12 plus 9 plus 4 is 28. In certain cases, you may not feel the need to use a T-chart. In this case, I don't feel the need. If you feel the need, it's fine to use one. But in this case, I'm going to say 39 minus 28 is 11. Let's take a look at another example. First, we'll group all our positive numbers, the 9, the 15, and the 14, and all our negative numbers, the 7, the 22, the 9, and the 26. 9 plus 15 plus 14 is 38. 7 plus 22 plus 9 plus 26 is 64. And bring down our subtraction. Let's use a T chart. The 38 is positive, the 64 is negative. Since they're on different sides, we'll move the smaller number and subtract. 64 minus 38, we'll have to borrow one from the 6. The 6 will become a 5, and we'll add 10 to the 4, making that 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 5 minus 3 is 2. Since we're underneath the negative side, we know our result is negative 26. Therefore, 38 minus 64 is negative 26. Now, let's solve the problem from the start of the lesson. We started with a $100 gift card. We made three purchases and added funds to the card once. We'll group all our positive numbers and our negative numbers. Our negative numbers are 45, 32, and 24. Our positive numbers are 125. So let's group those. 100 plus 25 minus 45 plus 32 plus 24. 100 plus 25 is 125. And 45 plus 32 plus 24 is 101. We'll do one subtraction, and our answer is 24. But this is only part of the answer, because the question wanted us to solve, how much money must you add for the card to be worth $50? We can look at this problem as 24 plus what equals 50? or what can vary depending on how much money is already on the card. So we use a variable. In this case, we'll subtract both sides by 24. This will give us x is equal to 26. We can check to see if this is the right answer by adding the amount that was on the card already with the amount that we will add to the card and see if it equals 50. 24 plus 26 does in fact equal 50. A second way you may want to look at adding integers is if the signs are the same, we're going to find the sum, same sum. If the signs are different, we're going to find a difference, different, difference. Sum means addition, difference means subtraction.
And the third way, when adding two positive numbers, you'll always end up with a positive. When adding a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative, the sign of the sum of the difference depends on which number has the greatest absolute value. Our second goal for today is to find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple when given two numbers. Prime numbers are numbers greater than one that have exactly two factors, one in a number itself. Examples 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. But in fact, 2 is the only even prime number. Relatively prime are numbers having no common factors other than one. Examples 4 and 9, 2 and 7, and 10 and 21. Fun fact, two prime numbers will always be relatively prime. When we take a look at the greatest common factor, the definition for factor are numbers we multiply to get another number. Examples, 2 and 3 are factors of 6 because 2 times 3 is equal to 6. 3 and 5 are factors of 15 because 3 times 5 is equal to 15. When we take a look at the least common multiple, the definition for a multiple, a multiple is the product result of one number multiplied by an integer. Examples, 6 is a multiple of 2 because 2 times 3 is 6. 15 is a multiple of 3 because 3 times 5 is equal to 15. And 12 is a multiple of 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. Multiples of 4s include 4 because 4 times 1 is 4, 8 because 4 times 2 is 8, and 12 because 4 times 3 is 12. And these multiples will continue. You'll just multiply 4 times an integer. Let's find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple of 12 and 16. First, we'll use an upside-down division symbol. We'll place the 12 and the 16 we'll have to find a number that divides 12 and 16 evenly. If you said two, you are correct. 12 divided by two is six, 16 divided by two is eight. Is there a number that divides six and eight evenly? And yes, that is two again. Six divided by two is three, eight divided by two is four. Is there a number that divides three and four evenly besides one? And there isn't. 3 and 4 are relatively prime since they have no common factors other than 1. To find our GCF, we'll take the two factors and multiply them. 2 times 2 is 4, so our GCF is 4. To find our LCM, all we have to do is multiply the 4 times the 12 and the 3 times the 16, which is 48. The LCM is 48. Now, some of you guys might have been saying, hey, couldn't we just factor out the 4? And yes, you are correct. You could have initially factored out a 4. Factoring out a 4 would be the most efficient way of finding the GCF and the LCM. We still know 3 and 4 are relatively prime. Therefore, our GCF is 4, and our LCM will still be 48. Remember, 4 times 12 is 48, as well as 3 times 16. The LCM is 48. Let's take a look at another example. 20 and 15. What number divides 20 and 15 evenly? If you said 5, you are correct. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 4 and 3 are relatively prime. Therefore, 5 is our greatest common factor. Our least common multiple is 3 times 20, or you can say 4 times 15, which is 60. 60 is our least common multiple. Let's take a look at another example, 18 and 12. What number can go into 18 and 12? A person may say 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 12 divided by 2 is 6. But wait. 3 can divide 9 and 6. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now we have two relatively prime numbers. Our GCF will be 2 times 3, which is 6. 
and our LCM would be 2 times 18 or 3 times 12, which is 36. The 36 is the LCM. You might have said, maybe I want to try the 3 first. That also would be correct. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 2 can divide 6 and 4 evenly. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Our GCF is 3 times 2, which is 6. Our LCM is 2 times 18, or 3 times 12, which is 36. Now you probably already know the best way of doing this is to factor out the 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Our GCF is 6. And our LCM is 2 times 18, or 3 times 12, which both equal 36. 36 is the LCM. 24 and 18. What number divides 24 and 18 evenly? If you said 2, you would be correct, or if you said 3. But what's the greatest common factor between 24 and 18? And that would be 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 4 and 3 are relatively prime, therefore our GCF is 6. 3 times 4, or 4 times 18, will give us 72, and 72 is the LCM. Let's take a look at one last example, 11 and 16. What number divides 11 and 16 evenly? And this is a doozy, it's 1. 11 divided by 1 is 11, 16 divided by 1 is 16. 11 and 16 are relatively prime. Our GCF is 1. Our LCM is 16 times 11, or 11 times 16, which is 176. 176 is the LCM. Sometimes the greatest common factor is a 1, and that's when the two numbers are relatively prime. This concludes our lesson for today.